The Communist for the FBI. <laughs> Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. The story you are about to hear is based on the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Savetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic, undercover man. In my nine years with the communists, I learned that the Reds have no respect for words. They can make the most eloquent phrases sound ugly and profane. And when they start using those words as weapons, you can expect a dirty fight. This story is a foul-by-foul foul description of one of those fights. In a moment... Listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sabetic, Undercover Man. as Matt Savetic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked Word Game. How do you stop the commies? I mean, really stop them. How do you bring that quicksilver treachery of the Reds to a complete, full, dead halt? I tried. For nine rotten years, I tried. But every time I thought I'd killed one red root, others would reach out to and snare me. Just for example, take the time those five red leaders were brought to trial in our state superior court. The trial had been on about a week. All the evidence pointed to a sure conviction. Oh, that would stop those five commies, all right. But there are more than five reds in the party. The court recognizes the request of the attorney for the defense. Because of the sudden illness of two of the five defendants, we shall adjourn until one week from today. Fettig, Fettig, one moment. Oh, hello, Oliver. Too bad about their being ill. I didn't know that... Food were... poisoning, it was perfect. Perfect? What? Never you... mind meeting tonight, Fettig. Be there. Tonight? Eight o'clock, my place. But why tonight? I thought... Action first, questions later, comrade. Be there. All right, comrades, listen to me. As you may have suspected, the sudden illness of the defendants, as the good great Judge Hillis put it, occurred by direct order of the party's state security commission. Now, our comrades on trial are feigning illness for one purpose, delay. The trial has been delayed for a week, and we need every minute of it to accomplish our goal. Just what is that goal, comrade Oliver? I'm getting to that, Freddy. Now, since we can no longer swing the jury in our favor, we must do the next best thing. We must end the trial before the verdict is handed down. No, no, no riots, no violence. No violence. Our plan this time is more subtle. We're going to prove that Judge Hillis is guilty of bias and prejudice. Comrade Oliver, that's a pretty big order. Judge Hillis is known to be as clean as, well, as bourgeois concepts of law demand. Ah, that's true, Svetic. But our cause demands that we dirty him up a bit. <laughs> After that, Oliver would say no more about the party's plans for Judge Hillis. He dispensed with the routine business of the cell quickly in that cold, officious manner of his. Then just as coldly, he dismissed the comrades. That is, he dismissed all the comrades but one. Uh, Sweaty. Oh, yes, comrade? Uh, shut the door. Sweaty, do you know Mrs. Lee Ronson? No. Of course you do. I'm sorry, Oliver, I don't. I say you do. Mrs. Ronson is one of the more social society matrons. She's also one of the richest. Then how would you expect me? Very rich, since her husband left her his fortune. Oh, wait a minute. 
Is she the one who sponsors all those big art events and... And civic projects and charity organizations, yes. Our security commission has instructed you to get in touch with Mrs. Robinson. Me? That's ridiculous. I've never met the woman. You'll get she... in touch with her, Frederick. Then you'll suggest that she invite Judge Hillis to lecture at one of her club luncheons. And just what makes you think Mrs. Ronson will take any suggestions from me? Because you and she have much in common. Namely what? Namely, the Communist Party. Oliver's grin was like a slit in an overripe melon. I must have registered a lot of surprise to inspire that. But then I had no idea Mrs. Ronson's oh-so-social interest included a secret affiliation with the commies. It was a surprise, all right, and a bigger one was still before me. In order to meet Mrs. Ronson, I had to attend one of her garden-variety afternoon musicales. I sat there and suffered, trying to figure which of these overstuffed powder pigeons was my hostess when... Mr. Spady? Oh. I'm Lee Ronson. You're... Very happy to meet you. I believe we can talk more comfortably inside. Society matron, yes. But powder pigeon, no. This pigeon had left the nest early and developed very unmatron-like plumage en route. I followed Mrs. Ronson across the patio into the house, enjoying every minute of it. Here we are. Now, I understand you have a message for me. Mm. Oh, yes, from uh, Comrade Oliver. Mm. Well, I'll get my textbook. No, that's not necessary. No? <laughs> if my dear departed husband knew he died for the convenience of our cause, he... Do I shock you, Comrade? No, not at all. Why? For that comment of mine. Does it make me seem cold? Cruel? I'm not, you know. With the revolt of the proletariat at stake, it's important that we all remain cold and emotionless. We're all alike. Guess it's just as well at the parties to get anywhere. What's the message? You're to invite Judge Hillis to speak at one of your club luncheons. Judge Hillis? What in the world for? I don't know. I was told only to relay the message, nothing else. So why should the party want Hillis at one of them? Will you have any trouble getting him to accept the invitation? No, no, nothing like that. He was a good friend of my husband's. I just can't understand why Oliver... Comrade Ronson, mm -hmm. our cell leader would tell you, action first, questions later. Well, Frederick, you saw Comrade Ronson? Uh, yes, Oliver, I... One moment. Here we are. What's that? All right, you saw Comrade Ronson, and? I delivered your message. And, and, get to the point, Frederick. She's planning to invite Judge Hillis to lecture to her business women's league as soon as possible. Good. And she's just as curious about the reason for all this as I am. What's it all about, comrade? Why do we want Hillis... Just at... a minute. What are you doing? I'll have the answer to all your questions in a moment. Well, it seems to me, if you want efficiency from your party workers, we I'm should... I'm not interested in your theory, Spetic. Now, this will clarify things for you. All right. You saw Comrade Ronson, man. I delivered your message. And, and get to the point. What's then? all that? That tape recording, of course. Judge Hillis to lecture oh, to but, her business. But why? What, what are you... Our weapon against Judge Hillis. And she's just as curious about the mm, reason. I don't get it. Oh, I you're am. stupid, Fenwick. This tape recorder, I've hidden it behind the sofa. There. Now, this tape recorder and a pair of scissors will bring the trial to an end before our comrades can be convicted. Oh, wait. Obviously, you intend to record something, then edit the tape to change the meaning of what you've recorded. We're going but... to record Judge Hillis's lecture to that women's club. It's bound to be innocuous enough when he delivers it. But when we have finished editing the tape, the good great judge will sound violently pro-communist. Pro-communist? Pro-communist. Then this tape will be presented to the presiding judge of Superior Court as proof that Hillis is biased and prejudiced, unfit to try five communists. I see. We not only kill the trial, but we ruin the judge's career. Yes. Isn't that a shame? Now that I knew the red plan, I had to stop it somehow. The simple way was to call in the FBI, but that would be too risky. If the Reds saw their scheme nipped at this early stage, they'd know there was a leak on the inside. I had to work this out alone. 
The first step was to prevent the judge from appearing at Lee Ronson's luncheon. Well, how nice. Come in there. You needn't look so grim. I was just getting ready to leave, but I can change my plan. Comrade Ronson. It's after working hours, Matt. Call me Lee. This is important, Comrade. All right, all right. Let's get the party business out of the way. That's why I'm here. I it's want... all fixed. Judge Hillis accepted my invitation. He's going to speak at the club luncheon tomorrow. Tomorrow? Mm-hmm. The topic is the reason for law. Sounds deadly, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. Matt, where are you going? Matt, I said I, I changed my plan. Hillis residence. Judge Hillis, please. It's important. I'm sorry, the judge is at Look, the I've got to talk to him. It's important. Who is this, please? My name is, is Matthews. I've got to talk to Judge Hillis. Well, it's... the judge is entertaining some guests tonight. I'll be happy to arrange an appointment at his office tomorrow. No, I've got to talk to him now. It's... I'm sorry. Hello? 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 Didn't you phone here about ten minutes ago? Yes. I've got to see the judge now. I'm I... sorry. The judge is entertaining... Who's at the door, Oh, Judge Hillis. I've got to see you, sir. It's urgent. Now, see here, you... Oh, oh Judge, what's I... What's all this rumpus about? I'm terribly sorry, sir. He insists on seeing you. All right, Chester. I only have a moment, young man. But if it's that important, come in. Come in. Sit down, Mr. Uh... Matthews. Judge, it's about that speech you're making tomorrow. Speech? Oh, that uh, woman's club affair. Yes. You'd be wise not to make that speech, sir. <laughs> Probably right. You know, women seldom do grasp the principles of law. But Mrs. Ronson asked me and... Judge, I... that speech can ruin you. It can do... Oh, come now, Matthews. Women's clubs don't frighten me. If that's all you have on your mind, I... Oh, my guest. If you'll excuse me, Matthews. Well, Judge, let me explain. I came... Your guests are here, sir. Well, thank you, Chester. Uh, come, Mr. Matthews. Let me dispel your fear of women's club. Uh, Chester, has Mrs. Ronson arrived? Yes, sir. Mrs. Ronson? Uh, president of the Business Women's League. Oh, Lee. Lee Ronson? Yes, Judge. I'm in here. Oh, uh, look, never mind. It's all right, sir. Uh, there's a gentleman here who's afraid of you. <laughs> come in here and set him straight. to Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Sabatik, and I was a communist for the FBI, and the second act of our story. This is what happens when you get cozy with the commies. You watch them bait a trap for an unsuspecting victim. You see the victim rise to the bait. You try to save him, but the trap snaps on you. Then you try a wild, desperate shot in the dark. And you see it miss its target, and you get hit by the ricochet. I've seen it happen to others. It was happening to me right now. I stood in the hall with Judge Hillis, watching the loveliest, wealthiest commie I'd ever known walk toward me. Never had a beautiful woman look so unwelcome as Lee Ronson did right now. In a moment, she'd recognize me. And Judge Hillis was making no secret of the reason for my visit. This chap would rather I didn't speak at your club's luncheon, Lane. Perhaps you can... Matt, what, what brings you here? Hey, you, you two know each other? Sure, we know each other, all right. We know each other just well enough to despise each other. What? What's this? Why do you think I don't want you to speak at that... that decadent woman's club? Here. She's why. Matt, what are you talking about? Mrs. Lee Ronson, pillar of society. Symbol of bourgeois idiocy. Now, just a minute, Matthew. This fool is out of his mind. Judge, he doesn't Get know what smart, he's talking. Get smart, Hillis. Why do you think I don't want you to lecture at her club? 
The big trouble with this world is the close alliance between the law and the anti-proletariat forces. If you judges and lawyers would forget that palaver about democracy and think in terms of proletarian dictatorship, you wouldn't be persecuting men like... Get out of here, Matthews. Get out. Sure, persecute me too. Where's that freedom of speech you judges are supposed to defend? Where's all that... Get out, Matthews. Get out before I... Get out. It was a long, wild chance talking like that. And frankly, I wasn't sure why I did it. Except it seemed to be the only way out of that spot. Maybe it would save my neck. And maybe it would seal my doom as a comic. My fate depended upon what Lee Ronson would tell Comrade Oliver. And I had no idea what her reaction would be. I hadn't been home very long, though, before I found out. Hello? Svedek, this is Oliver. I know. Congratulations. What? Congratulations, you are superb. Look, Oliver, I'm not in the mood for your sarcasm tonight. I'm not being sarcastic, you fool. Comrade Ronson just told me about your performance at the judge's place. Oh? I didn't think you had that much ingenuity, Svetik. It's remarkable. You've practically assured our success tomorrow. Really? How? Oh, don't be coy, comrade. You know perfectly well that we had no guarantee that Judge Hillis would speak. But you got him so incensed tonight he wouldn't think of not appearing. You guaranteed delivery of our sacrificial pig, Svetik. I'm proud of you. Sacrificial pig was right. I'd saved my own neck, but I'd put Judge Hillis right smack on the chopping block. In this case, the meat cleaver was in the form of a tape recorder hidden under the luncheon table at Comrade Lee Ronson's Business Women's League. Oliver and I kept ourselves out of sight as Judge Hillis spoke his last words as a respectable citizen. You might very well sum up the reason for law in this manner. Without law, civilization is not civilization at all, but a jungle. Man-made law ensures our God-given liberties against violence and the creeping progress of insidious ideologies. The law is our strongest weapon against violence, which, of course, is the greatest enemy of progress. Here we are, Fedek. Now, you heard Hillis speak as we recorded it. Now, listen. You've edited the tape already? Spent most of the night doing it. Turn on the switch. Okay. No, no, that's the record switch. Flip the one next to it on the right. That's it. Now. Civilization is but a jungle. Violence is our strongest weapon against insidious man-made law, which, of course, is the enemy of progress. Violence ensures the progress of our God-given ideologies. Well, Svetik, what do you think of it? It's downright frightening. The fact, huh? Oh, and Comrade Ronson is getting the affidavit signed by respectable citizens. What affidavits? Oh, routine things. Sworn statements to the effect that the signers heard the Hillis speech and are convinced that he is biased and prejudiced, unfit to try the case. I'm presenting the tape and the affidavits to the presiding judge of Superior Court in a little while. Then we'll see... Uh, that must be Comrade Ronson. Excuse me. Oh, if you want to hear that tape again, go right ahead. Oh, uh, no thanks. I've heard plenty. Oliver bustled into the next room to answer the phone. It was Lee Ronson, as expected. I was alone, staring at the tape recorder. Switch number one, playback. The one that would pull the props out from under Judge Hillis's reputation. Switch number two, erase. I could wipe that treacherous tape clean right now. But then I'd be replacing Hillis on a sacrificial altar. Switch number three, record. The one that had done all the dirty work. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was still capable of doing more. I switched it on. Then I picked up the microphone and walked to the doorway where I and the microphone could hear Oliver's phone conversation. I tell you, Comrade Ronson, it's remarkable. Yes. Yes, a few deft clips with the scissors, and I've turned that tape into a noose for Judge Hillis's neck. Hmm? Yes. Of course the speech was innocuous enough. But now, now I've made it into incriminating testimony. All right. All right, get the affidavits over here quickly. We're to be at Superior Court in an hour. Yes. Yes, I know now. That was enough. I walked back, replaced the microphone, and turned off the record switch. 
Oliver's self-incriminating statements were now on the same tape he'd prepared to ruin Hillis. Now I had to keep Oliver from hearing that tape before it was heard by the Superior Court. Well, Oliver, I'm ready if you are. Hello, Matt. Hello, Comrade Ronson. You have a habit of impressing me, Matt. Oh, really? Yes. That performance at the judge's house was terrific. Thanks. Just wait till you hear the judge's performance on this tape, Comrade. I'd like to. Do we have time? Well... It's pretty late. If you have that appointment, you well, better... Well, is the tape very long? No, no, not too long. I'm very pleased with my editing job, and so was Svetik. Right, Svetik? Svetik! Hmm? Oh, oh, yes. I, I was impressed, all right. But well, here, I'll better... rewind it and play it for you. Good. I couldn't let Oliver play that tape now. The phone conversation I'd recorded was the only chance left to indict these commies and clear the judge. I looked around the room for a clue, an idea, a hint, anything that would... Yeah, the plug in the wall socket. Just a few steps from where I was standing. Oh, what's the matter? I don't know. Did you kick the plug out, Svetik? Svetik, wake up. I'm I'm checking it, comrade. No, the plug's in the socket, all right. Then what the devil is wrong with this thing? Well, it at least served its purpose before it conked out. Fine thing. Just when I have a chance to enjoy it. If you two poke around with this thing now, you'll never make that appointment on time. I don't understand. It was in perfect shape a moment ago. Let's go. I'll hear it when the big shots at Superior Court hear it. You sure that plug is in, Svetik? Of course it is. Here, look. Whoop, the light's on. No, out again. Uh, well, the machine has earned its right to break down. Let's go. Okay. Got everything? Let's see. Affidavits. Oh, let me get this spool of tape off the machine. Coming with us, man? How'll you play the tape at the courthouse? I'll arrange to have a machine there. You coming, Svetik? I'll walk to the door anyway. Well, we'll all go. Make a big impression. It's important. I'd just as soon not. It's your baby, Oliver, and... Medic, you'll come with us. Now. Well, we're a few minutes early. Why do courthouses always look so gloomy? Yeah, this one will look much gloomier when they hear the tape. Gloomier than Comrade Freddy? What's wrong, Matt? Oh, oh nothing. I can't help feeling a little bad for Judge Hillis. Oh, pangs of guilt. Our superiors wouldn't approve. Remember this, Freddy. Conscience is the product of misguided emotion. There is no room for such nonsense in our work. Right. Conscience and communists don't go together. Oh, just a minute. Aesthetic, our appointment is... I can't go in there with you. Why not? You're as much a part of this. Remember my little performance at Judge Hillis's house? Well, what of it? You I made do... it perfectly clear that I'm a fervent communist. Hillis is bound to be called in on this if he sees me. Ah, oh, you're right. Sure, I'm right. They don't know you in there, Oliver. And they know Lee only as a pillar of society. But me, I'm that dirty red. Right, Aesthetic. Good thinking. Uh, come along, comrade. All right. Oh, uh, Freddy. Yes, Oliver? Uh, call a repairman for that tape recorder, will you? Comrade Ronson and I may be delayed here longer than we expect. Yeah, that's right. Longer than you expect. I watched them disappear into the gloom of Superior Court. An arrogant little man and a disarmingly beautiful woman. Two vicious reds who had appointed themselves hangmen for Judge Hillis. Now the noose was around their necks, not his. In a few days, the trial of the five communist leaders was resumed with Judge Hillis again on the bench. In a few more days, a new trial was scheduled in Superior Court. The defendants, Comrade Oliver and Mrs. Ronson. The charges, forgery and criminal libel. The evidence, the phony affidavits, the doctored tape, the recorded phone conversation attributed not to me, but to Oliver's carelessness. I thought I'd be called as a witness, but I wasn't. I wasn't considered important enough by the court or by the commies. It's important to be unimportant when your only friends are enemies. Unimportance is a blessing when you're forced to walk alone.
Dana Andrews will return in just a moment. <laughs> 